Hello everybody, it's Tanner Fishies here, back again with a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the first volume of the new Ninjago Spinjitzu Brothers series of novels. This is, of course, a prequel series tied to the main Ninjago story, and it centers around a young Master Wu and a young Garmadon, and sort of catalogs their adventures and misadventures before the events of the modern series truly kicked off. And this, of course, comes in the form of several books. Volume 1 is out right now, that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video, and Volume 2 will be coming out very soon as well, with Volume 3 confirmed as well, scheduled to be released at some point in 2022. So in terms of my review, of course, this is all going to be my own opinion, my own personal thoughts on this new book book. I have in fact read it, just finished reading it, so I figured I would give my thoughts on it, and I will be talking about spoilers as well. I don't really feel comfortable reviewing this book without discussing spoilers, so do keep that in mind. And obviously, if you have not read the book just yet, you might want to wait until you read it, and then come back and check out this review. Otherwise, if you don't care about spoilers, well, then let's just continue onwards here. I'm going to be talking about some things that I enjoyed about this book, then I'm going to be diving into some things that I really did not care for, and then finally, at the end of the video, I will be giving the book Book a score out of 10. Once again, this is volume one of Spinjitzu Brothers, entitled The Curse of the Cat-Eyed Jewel. Let's begin. So I figured we would start things off by talking about some of the key characters, those of course being Young Wu and Young Garmadon. I really enjoyed these interpretations of Wu and Garmadon. It is very much lining up with what we know from the Ninjago TV series. In regards to their personalities when they were younger, they of course shared a lot of the same traits as the modern day ninja, being super reckless, being super arrogant, not exactly listening to their teachers, or in this case their father, and ultimately getting into trouble as a result of those character quirks. Now in terms of Master Wu, he is pretty much presented in this story as the logical of the two brothers, while Garmadon is a little more arrogant, a little more headstrong, and he also is a little bit more easily manipulated, we'll get more into that later on, but I really thought that Wu and Garmadon's character arcs in this story were very well done and very consistent with how we know them in the Ninjago TV series, which is good considering how this is supposed to be a canonical prequel to the Ninjago TV series. In terms of a new character, we of course have been introduced to the cat ninja, known as Nineka or Nineko. Neko is of course Japanese for cat, so her name makes sense, and she is, as mentioned, a feline ninja warrior with a very unique design. I really enjoyed Nineko in this story, and once again, spoilers ahead, she actually turns out to be kind of a bad guy, sort of a villain to Wu and Garmadon. In the quest to find the cat eye jewel, Nineko is after immortality. She of course has nine lives being a cat, but ultimately she needs more because she keeps on using up those nine lives, and as such, she is very desperate to get this cat eyed jewel. And I thought that her relationship with Wu and Garmadon was done really well. As mentioned earlier, Master Wu was a little skeptical of Nineko at first, and those suspicions do turn out to be accurate and warranted, while Garmadon is a little bit more, I guess, easily manipulated towards Nineko's side, which does indeed make sense as well, considering how at this point in the Ninjago story, Garmadon is indeed starting to feel the effects of the Great Devourer's venom, and starting to turn as a result. As such, he is more sympathetic towards Nineko, and after learning that that Nineko was trained by the first Spinjitzu master and ultimately let go, Garmadon sympathizes with her even more, which is a very grave mistake on his part. But it's all part of the story, and I thought that the characters were really well written. We also get a little more of the first Spinjitzu master in here as well, and he is very much in the background of a lot of this story. He's not really in the forefront, though he does express his disappointment in his two sons, which is kind of a common theme during this story. With everything that happened with Wu, Garmadon, and their father, you can see how this relationship was kind of of rocky, yet still extremely solid. We also have some side characters that are pretty cool, but ultimately the main three characters are Wu, Garmadon, and Nineko, and I thought that all three of those characters were handled extremely well. Moving on from the characters, the actual story itself. Is it enjoyable? In my opinion, sure, it is. I could tell that the people actually working on this book understood Ninjago, and that's just because how well the world is fleshed out here, and especially in regard to the characters. I enjoyed seeing little things that further established itself as being part of the Ninjago. Ninjago history and Ninjago lore, and as I mentioned earlier, it is very apparent to me at least that the people working on this book absolutely understood what Ninjago is all about. Minor things, like arguments between Wu and Garmadon, there is a lot of that going on here, and in a lot of ways this historical era of Ninjago ties in with the modern day Ninjago storyline, and the ninja team itself. You could see where those parallels are, and I really enjoyed how the book actually presented those to the audience. The writing itself is enjoyable, it is simple, obviously I'm not the target 
target audience for this book. This is maybe geared towards a younger audience in terms of how it's written. This book also isn't very long. It is a hundred something pages, but the book itself has huge text and huge writing and lots of illustration, obviously not meant for, you know, my demographic as mentioned earlier, but I still enjoyed the read. It was enjoyable. I was able to sit down and finish the book within maybe a half hour at most, and it was a relaxing time, and I enjoyed seeing the context of this certain era of Ninjago. While it is a small side story, it pays attention to continuity, which is always great. I feel like Ninjago fans are going to very much appreciate the continuity in this book. The book itself is very applicable to the modern day Ninjago scene and settles itself in as a solid prequel. There's no beating around the bush here. This is a prequel to the main Ninjago storyline that we all know and love. Even going as far as to work itself into actual historical events that we know from the show, such as Master Wu's really weird relationship with Asphira and the scrolls of Forbidden Spinjitzu. All of that stuff is mentioned in this book, and it just goes to show that once again the people who worked on this book actually understand what Ninjago is all about and cared about providing that continuity. Not every Ninjago book does that, even the most recent book of Elemental Powers is pretty light on continuity. But this book, I have to say, I was very impressed, and I want to see where the storyline goes in future installments. But in terms of this book, I was very impressed with how Volume 1 of Spinjitzu Brothers actually handled itself, and I hope we can see some of these characters and events tied into the modern day Ninjago story. I would love to see Nineko come back in the modern day. They sort of allude to her still being around by the time the book wraps up, so who knows, maybe we will actually see something like that at some point in Ninjago's future. I also got to touch on the artwork of this book. The artwork is gorgeous. Not every page has an illustration, but the illustrations absolutely pack a punch when you actually see them. The drawings are super well detailed. Of course, the book is in black and white, obviously, but the book takes advantage of that too. And in a way, it does make sense considering the time period. This is older Ninjago, it makes sense that it would be in black and white. I for one didn't really have an issue with the storyline in terms of how it presented itself to the audience. I thought this book was really solid, with great artwork, great characters, and authors and illustrators that actually care about Ninjago. I found myself to be pleasantly surprised by this book, with no real complaints. The only complaint that I could really say is that maybe the reading was a little simplistic, and maybe the writing was a little robotic at times, but then I remember I'm not the target audience of this book, but I can still appreciate it for what it's trying to do. All things considered, you guys, I would highly recommend checking out the first volume of Spinjitzu Brothers, known of course as The Curse of the Cat-Eyed Jewel, and in terms of a score, I'm going to have to give volume 1 a 10 out of 10. I was very impressed by this book, and I really enjoyed it. I would highly encourage you guys to check out this book for yourself if you haven't done so already, because I see a lot of potential in this story. Spinjitzu Brothers sets itself up for success, and I I hope it actually gets that success. We know of two more volumes at least coming out very soon, and I'm excited to see where the story continues from here. Thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. That'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here today. Just giving a quick casual review of Spinjitzu Brothers Volume 1, The Curse of the Cat-Eyed Jewel. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought about the storyline, if you've read it for yourself, or if you haven't read it just yet, are you going to? Once again, I would highly recommend it, so let me know down below in the comments what you thought about this story. And also, let me know what you thought of the video itself. I had a lot of fun making this review, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. With all that being said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out the links down below in the description from other forms of social media. As always, a big shout out goes out to my Patreon supporters, including once again, the Marvelous Jan. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Once again, my name is Tanner Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell.